Hey folks, I've got some brand new three rail O scale heavyweight passenger cars. They're made by Atlas and we're going to check them out right now on Eric's Trains. Alright, so I'm really excited to finally have these for a few reasons. First of all, as you can see, they are absolutely gorgeous. Secondly, up until now, I really haven't had a large amount of B&O passenger cars in my fleet. And finally, these are XMTH heavyweight passenger cars that are now being made by Atlas. And so I really wanted to get them to see what kind of a job Atlas has done with them. And I'm happy to say they have done an outstanding job with these. As most of you probably know by now, a few years ago, Mike Wolf, the founder of MTH, decided that he wanted to retire and was going to close the company. Well, the remaining people at MTH decided to keep the company going. And yes, MTH is still in business. They are still making trains, despite what a lot of people keep saying, they are not out of business. In fact, some new MTH trains are supposed to arrive over at Legacy Station probably in the next week or two. Anyway, to raise capital so that they could still in business they had to sell some of their tooling and so from what I understand they sold about 20% of their existing tooling to both Lionel and Atlas. So both Lionel and Atlas have begun to offer these XMTH models in their recent catalogs. I think Atlas was the first to strike with the 44 ton locomotive but Lionel has some stuff coming as well. Now it's interesting to note the two different approaches that Lionel and Atlas have taken to the XMTH models. On one hand you have Lionel and they've had to make extensive changes to a lot of the XMTH models, particularly the locomotives, because obviously they can't put out a Lionel locomotive with Protosound 3 on the inside. So they've had to modify them to have Legacy on board, and they've upgraded the features like the smoke effects and so forth to be on par with other high-end Lionel locomotives. Atlas, on the other hand, has changed as little as possible. They've really taken a sort of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, let's not reinvent the wheel approach to these XMTH models. And so to that end, they've really only changed the things they absolutely had to change. And from what I can tell, that amounts to basically two things. First of all, they had to put it in an Atlas box, so they've got the new Premier Line honeycomb style box, which is really nice looking, by the way. And then secondly, they had to change the stampings on the undersides of these models. So where it used to say MTH here, it now says Atlas. And what's kind of cool is that you can kind of see where they modified it. I'm not sure how well you can see this, but you can tell it didn't always say Atlas. They didn't do the cleanest job here. They had to get rid of the MTH and replace it with Atlas O. Pretty cool. And then also on the trucks, not on these, but on the other XMTH freight cars, it used to have MTH stamped on the trucks, and now they've gone over that with Atlas. And those are basically the only changes that Atlas has made to these models. And it's really great that they took that approach because, I mean, these models are great the way they are. There's no reason to go reinventing the wheel. In fact, the XMTH models that Atlas is putting out, they're being made in the exact same factory by the exact same people that used to make the MTH models. And, you know, with the locomotives, they still have Protosound 3, just like the MTH models did. So it's really great that Atlas is carrying forward a lot of the spirit and the legacy of MTH in these models that they're putting out now. Anyway, I've got a total of seven of these passenger cars in this beautiful B&O paint scheme. There's the RPO car that you've already seen. Behind that, we've got a baggage car, Railway Express Agency number 663. Behind that, we've got a combine car, road number 1444. Then we've got a diner car, and that's got a road number of 1035. Then we've got two coach cars. We've got number 3516, and then we've got number 3522. And then at the very end, of course, we've got an observation car. And this one has a proper name. It's the John T. Collinson with a road number of 908. Now, these seven cars are a combination of three different purchases. The RPO car is sold by itself, 
and it has a retail price right at $110. Then there's a four pack that has the baggage car, both coach cars, and an observation car. That has a retail price right at $440. Then there's a two pack that has the combine and the diner cars, and that has a retail price right at $220. Now they did a whole bunch of different road names. Obviously they did B&O, they also did GMNO, Pensy, Pittsburgh and West Virginia, B&M, they did two versions of Redding, Blue Mountain, and Northern, and then they also did two versions of Southern, so there's definitely lots to choose from. So the details on these cars are great. If you've ever had MTH heavyweight passenger cars, you can expect the same here because, hey, they are MTH heavyweight passenger cars. Now, none of the passenger doors open on any of these cars, but the cargo doors do open on every car that has them. So here on the combine car, it's got two baggage doors and those open. And then on the baggage car, it's got two on each side for a total of four, those open. And then the grand finale is the RPO car because it's got three opening doors on each side for a total of six. I've dimmed the rim lights so I can show you the interior lighting in these cars. And these cars do have constant voltage LED lighting, which means that if you go over a dirty section of track or a switch or something like that, you won't get that really bad flickering like you would with incandescent lighting. Anyway, here's the RPO car. And it's actually got some nice details on the inside. You can see a little rack there for sorting mail. Now there's no figures or anything, but it would be kind of fun to outfit this with some postal workers and stuff like that. Mail bags and etc. Here's the baggage car and it's just got some basic LED lighting. There's no details or anything like that on the inside. And then we've got the combine car and it is lighted and it has figures, which is nice. These days, a lot of passenger cars don't have figures, but these do because the original MTH cars had figures. So that's really nice. And there's quite a few of them. I mean, the car is not full, but if I had to take a guess, it's probably, you know, 25, 30% full, which is not bad. And then we've got the dining car. I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's like a kitchen and stuff over there. And then you got the people with their tables. Pretty cool. Then we've got one of the two coach cars. Looks very nice. Here's the other coach car. And then here's the observation car. Now I will probably go in and add more people at some point. But it's nice that they have some right out of the box. Now, one really nice Easter egg with these cars, I'm not sure if you can see it, but right here there's a figure, and that is a hobo. He's got a stick with a bag on it, and he has snuck onto this car to get some free transportation. It's pretty cool. Let me see if I can get a better view of that. There he is, right there. <laughs> pretty cool. And then here's the end of the observation car, which looks great. You've got these marker lights here, and then you've got a lighted drum head. Now, the white balance on the camera is messing with that, but there is a writing on that. It says the Columbian, New York, Washington. And here's a look at the gap between these cars, which isn't that bad considering this is O-scale. We usually have to deal with bigger gaps. I wouldn't want to be a passenger having to leap across that gap, but it's okay. And then here's a closer look at that diaphragm. It's a soft rubber diaphragm. Got a brake wheel here and some nice detailing on each side and some grab irons and so forth. It looks great. Here's a close up of those die cast metal sprung trucks. It's pure MTH gold. Gotta love them. All right, now comes the fun part. We're gonna run these cars around the layout for a few minutes and pulling those cars quite appropriately will be these beautiful B&O F units, which are also made by Atlas. Atlas put these out a few years ago. And now that you've seen these F units, you can understand why Atlas wanted to buy the MTH heavyweight passenger car toolings because those cars go perfectly with these F units.
All right, so there you have it, the new XMTH heavyweight passenger cars now being made by Atlas. I think Atlas has done a fantastic job with these by basically not reinventing the wheel. They realized that these models were great the way they were, and so why fix what's not broken? And it's great that Atlas is carrying forward the legacy of these wonderful MTH models. So again, the prices on these for the RPO car, that has a retail of right at 110. For the four pack that has the baggage, two coaches and an observation, that retails for right at $440. And then the two pack with the combine and the diner car retails for right at $220. And actually those prices are not too bad. You know, around $110 per car. That's really not too bad when you consider how expensive Lionel passenger cars have become. So if you'd like to get these, contact your favorite Atlas dealer or go to shop.atlasrr.com. If you'd like to support this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. That can be done through Patreon at patreon.com slash ericstrains. Patreon supporters get all sorts of perks and benefits, and you can read about those benefits on my Patreon page. I'd like to put a big thank you out there to all of my current Patreon supporters. Your support means the world not only to me, but to the future of this channel. And finally, if you'd like to buy an Eric's Trains t-shirt or anything else I might be selling, check out the Eric's Trains online store at ericstrains.com store. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.